Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss uh, some important concepts related to finance, in short what we call as finance current affairs. And these concepts as well as questions based on this which I'm going to discuss simultaneously are going to hold a lot of importance for the upcoming RBI and SEBI examinations. Uh, before we start, let's have a look at all the courses that you can avail, that you can use in case you're planning to start your preparations or if you're planning to complete your preparations right now immediately before the examination. All of you must be aware about the crash course which covers entire phase one plus entire phase two and it also covers revision which is presently going on. So you've already done your uh, phase one and phase two prep and you're willing to revise with me, you can enroll in the crash course. The second that I've launched recently specifically for revision which a lot of students were demanding and asking for is uh, are these two courses on which we have 50% discount going on right now. You can use this code SPECIAL50 for any of these courses. Now what are the differences between these two courses? Uh, the 8001 which is going to cost you only rupees 4000 and GST is going to be inclusive so I am going to be paying the GST on this. Uh, includes phase one complete plus the ebook which itself costs around 800 now and uh, it also includes past year papers uh, so these three things are included in this it also includes uh, mock tests for phase one entire phase one uh, that means 10 mock tests for entire phase one it will have general awareness it will have static gk uh, okay it will have uh, quant reasoning and english all the videos all the content and the ebook as well and the second is uh, for 3900 after discount it's going to cost you 1950 inclusive of gst it's going to include phase one mock tests number one all 10 mocks plus phase one general awareness and static gk plus the ebook of uh, 2000 plus questions and past year papers so these are the four things that are going to be included in this uh, course which is specifically meant for students who have already prepared for phase one but feel that they need more revision or more com coverage for general awareness and static GK and, and who also wanted to take some mocks. So instead of just providing mocks, I also thought let's provide general awareness and static GK simultaneously so that you can improve your performance in mocks immediately after you take a test because all the solutions and the explanations, everything is already available in the static GK and general awareness. Okay. And the ebook, which has been launched recently, it's also included in this. Now, that's a heavy ebook which contains uh, more than 850 pages, uh, a lot of practice questions of the level of RBA grade B. Okay. With this, let us start with the session. And we're going to be talking about some important concepts and fundamentals related to finance current affairs. So, let's talk about equalization Levi today. Now, what exactly is equalization Levi? You might have read about it, but what we're going to focus upon in this lesson along with the uh, definition and meaning of equalization Levi is also what services are a part of this Levi, on which services can it, uh, can it be uh, you know, uh, uh, taxed and what kind of organizations uh, are going to be affected by equalization Levi. So it was introduced in the year 2016 and the purpose was of taxing digital transactions that is the income accruing to foreign e-commerce companies, let's say Amazon. So let's say you buy a book from Amazon. Now, now uh, the price of this book is let's say 400 rupees. But uh, out of this 300 is given to the publisher but 100 rupees goes to Amazon. Now this 100 rupees that goes to Amazon because of let's say delivery charges or because of other services that Amazon is providing to the publisher for uh, delivering this book or putting it on Amazon website is going to be an income for Amazon. Now whatever income Amazon earns out of this kind of digital transaction uh, should be taxed in India but normally it is not okay because of blue goals in taxation. Another example is uh, let's say you have uh, uh, you, you know, you are on Facebook and you are a marketer who wants to sell his books. And therefore, what you do is you start, uh, you know, uh, putting in uh, money on Facebook and start advertising on Facebook. Now, when you advertise on Facebook, you are putting in some money, you're paying some money, let's say rupees 500 per day to Facebook. Facebook is advertising you on uh, various channels 
to its uh, website and through that you end up earning some money you end up earning some money you sell some books you earn some money now this 500 that you paid to facebook for digital advertisement is uh, an income for this foreign e-commerce company because facebook is a foreign company uh, which has been uh, headquartered in ireland so all these kinds of services which are being carried out by foreign e-commerce companies let's say online advertisement any digital advertising space any services for the purpose of online advertisement are calculated or are counted or come under equalization labor okay the purpose is very simple to tax companies which are working in india uh, uh, earning some money out of their operations in india but not paying taxes okay so this was about equalization levy now how much is india collecting from this direct tax the tax department collected 939 crore as equalization levy in financial year 19 which is a lot of money and uh, in 2000 in, in cross year on year on year growth is also being very high 59% so it was 590 and it almost doubled in the financial year 2019 and the expectations are that it should be uh, up to 1 trillion by the year 2025 not the uh, taxes but the overall economy overall digital transactions economy overall digital advertisement economy related to uh related to these foreign companies working in india okay so it is uh, presently 200 billion out of which they are paying 5939 crore rupees as taxes and they are expected to increase to 1 trillion by 2025 that's a potential question that can be asked in the examination okay so this is all about equalization levy which i wanted to discuss a small topic but a very important one a question be, can be asked from the meaning of equalization levy from the services or companies kinds of companies that are involved or included in equalization levy plus the projections of uh, uh, you know digital economy in the next 5 uh, to 6 years up to 2025 that can also be asked in the exam if you like this lesson do not forget to subscribe to the channel press the bell icon to get regular updates all the very best for your rbi examination take care